this is going to sound contradictory, but part of log coming to a logical conclusion, God is real. It's also understanding logically a belief in God means some things will be unknowable about him, right? And so I actually don't see that as contradictory, like accepting the fact that, yes, well, we understand the full nature of the Trinity. No. This side of eternity is some answers are just like God is God. Right, and we're, if you accept God, then some things are not going to be fully comprehensible. Hey man, you want to talk about God? So a couple of weeks ago, Brandon and I were, we were at dinner. We actually had a bachelor yeah, party. We were. Um, and the bachelor party consisted of going to Top Golf and then mm -hmm. going to dinner. Mm -hmm. And then going, I didn't go to Top Golf. Right. And then we went to like a cigar lounge afterwards and you didn't, you didn't I go didn't to that go either. either. I went to dinner. Right. But <laughs> at dinner, we talked about a variety of things. <laughs> um, but one of the things that you, you talked about was I was sitting here and I was like, Brandon, what do you do at home? What do you do? And he was like, I like to go home and I have this really big, thick book, like thick <laughs> with two C's on apologetics <laughs> that I just like go home and read. And I was like, wow, really? Yep, yep. <laughs> Tell me more. Right. Like, really? You were intrigued. Uh <laughs> really? And so we've like, I want we wanted to have somebody on talk about apologetics. And I was like, Brandon seems like a great guy. Yeah, to do this. Little yeah. do you know. No, I'm kidding. Right? I, I hope it's. Okay. I hope he's good. Right? Like, well, he's also the first person we're recording with as yeah. a guest. So Come on, person. what an honor! Right, you're welcome. You're absolutely thank you, welcome. thank no. you. I really want merch out of this. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just putting that on on the you know, record here. I feel like a lot of the, several people are talking about this. I I you know? wore it to church the other day, and I, there were like 13 people who came up and were like, "Hey, where do I get one of those?" And I was like, "Are they asking because it's cool, or or, be, or because they're kind, or because <laughs> it's like a pity? Is it cool or is it kind? That's a that's a good question. <laughs> is it cool or is it kind? It could be a I shirt. That cool. could be a shirt. Watch <laughs> out! Watch out for Brandon's next sermon that he gives. <laughs> the title of my message is. <laughs> <laughs> watch, cool watch. Is kind. Uh -huh, watch him. Uh -huh. Watch him do it. Is that yeah. one there? Yeah. What? And that bottle. Is that your merch? Yeah. See, that's cool. Yeah, we got this. It's both cool and kind. It's like the first episode or two, we were just we had like water, water bottles. bottles yeah. And it like felt weird. And I was like, hey, this is a great branding opportunity. Come on. There you go. And here you go, everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Showing it off. Right. Okay, sorry. You were saying. No. I was no, I I think that also like being totally transparent uh you told me about this conversation mm -hmm. and he was like oh we should totally have brandon on uh pastor brandon on to pastor. talk about apologetics and i had one of these moments i don't know if you've ever had one of these moments i'm like mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah that sounds good as if i knew what apologetics were but if i'm <laughs> being really honest and i've been in church right my whole life yeah never really talked about apologetics right yeah well, I feel like it has to be also weird for you because if I'm not mistaken, you and Brandon have never like Correct. hung out or anything. No. So not only no. was it... Well, I mean, you've hung out with him twice. Let's not act like... I, I mean, that's more than zero. <laughs> that's I mean. more well, than now, zero. Now, now I'm at one. Right. True. Now, Come I'm, on. at one. now I'm at three. Now you're three. Right. Come oh, on. So uh, not, not a, but you had like this thought of like, what are apologetics, which I also have. I've yeah. never like sat down and had like a, a discussion about them and... I've never even attempted to read a book on them because I feel like it would just be boring. Mm -hmm. It be is. Honest. It can be. Right. But here's here's what we did do. We're going to – here's here's what did happen is mm -hmm. that, Corey, yeah. you actually put together a pastor hot seat. Oh, yeah. To kind of get to know just, Brandon over here. Yeah. I don't know this. I don't know what's coming. And it's important that lie. you uh, that you respond the rules of the game that respond mm. with like gut impulses here got, doesn't got, have to be polished doesn't have to be perfect so no silence for this part just no silence you have three fire. three seconds max oh, i boy. would say like two and a quarter maybe. two and a quarter seconds max okay 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 two and a quarter. you got first the timer? ever okay. episode of the ke pastor hot seat yes section yes segment. okay segment <laughs> dang it <laughs> uh you're a pastor yes sir so favorite post-service meal Oh, this is going to sound weird if I'm preaching fruit. 
fruit. Post service. Uh huh. Because he's hungry on that spirit, bro. Right. I something about fruit just after like a service every time will pushes. smack totally different. Okay. Yeah. I love I, okay. I normally will take bananas in the car. And just chow down after. Okay. So you there you go. Potassium. That's yeah. great. Come on. Uh, best show on television right now. Oh, right now? I don't I don't really watch best TV show right on now. Television period the ever. Office. Okay. Of course. I want to ask number three because it's something that I feel very passionate about <laughs> uh-huh. inside. Okay. Um the red crocs that Corey's currently wearing. Yeah. Hot love or em. not. Hot or not. Hot. Ah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brandon crocs? and my mom have confirmed. <laughs> Crocs are in. Corey's Crocs mother also are in. commented how I was really, really good at podcasting and said nothing about Corey. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. Okay, but the Crocs. You need some of those things to put in them. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the the. Was the same, yeah, yep. but, uh, yep. bedazzles. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the worship song. The worship song that you could go without ever hearing again. Oceans. Easy. <sighs> Oh. What Easy oceans? I have felt this way since two months after it came out. That wow. is a true hot take, honestly. <laughs> wow. it is. So here's the thing. Great song. You want to talk about one worship song? Beat to death. There are there are oceans. There are thousands. Thousands. Well, well I would say, given the scale we're at now, tens right. of Christian white girls right now going, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, here's the thing: is I do not there. So I with worship songs in particular. So by the way, everybody. So uh, Brandon is a pastor in Amplify Church where mm-hmm. we attend. Yes. And right now you serve as the worship pastor. Worship in college. And college pastor. Yes. And previous to that, you were youth and college. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, and so he's like right in the middle of this. But with worship, with oceans, I feel like there are certain worship songs that are great if you listen to them on the on like Spotify, mm-hmm. like in the car driving down the road. But they're mm-hmm. not great to like do for worship in a service. Mm-hmm. And I feel like oceans is one of those. I'm trying to. What's the bridge? See. Oh, it's four and a half minutes. Just the bridge. Of Spirit Lead Me. Oh. Uh, Spirit Lead Me with my trust is without borders. Both of you can yeah. sing like, actually on key, so I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Great song. Like, great. And I love, I think it was Hillsong who wrote it. I love Hillsong Worship. They're great. But. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Hmm. It's just Sagrita. Okay. Never listen to it again. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> if we're if I ever see Brandon for a second time yeah. and hang out with him, not playing I've also the seen right. three brides walk down the aisle to that song. Really? Wow. Uh-huh. How many of those good weddings for them. were you? Were you? <laughs> good. Were it you, just really. <laughs> were you like administering any of these weddings? No, 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 no. Okay. Officiating. Uh-uh. Right. I, yeah. I would have watched I would have watched. No, I'm kidding. Right. Question number five. <laughs> yes. Uh, as a previous youth college pastor, what is the best game to play as like an icebreaker for like a college youth ministry? Uh, flip cup. Non-alcoholic, <laughs> non-alcoholic flip cup is the best. It's a great icebreaker in other settings too. <laughs> yeah, right. It is. It, it is, is not. The but you do it, the relay version. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Relay yeah. flip cup. Get the Smacks. competitive juice. Yep. 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 I, I love that for you. Uh, <laughs> I love that for all of your youth and college students. <laughs> you want them to have the technique down before they get to college. Right? Oh, and yeah, you yeah. can know which one of them. You know, are out on a Friday night. Right, you can right, tell, right, you know. Who's You're got like, skills? Oh, okay, okay. They just uh-huh. tip their hand. Right. Tip <laughs> yeah. a pastor. Yeah. Really, it's Brandon's It's Brandon's way of figuring out who needs to spend a little bit extra time. It's with. all strategic. <laughs> who should, it's I, pray? All, who I, should have... I pray more for this week? <laughs> I have a reason. Right. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway. Yes. That was fun. Wanted... I thought he was going to say, like, hot seat questions because this was great. That's a good one. It was a good. This was, he answered well. Yeah. He did. Hot takes. Saw a couple hot takes. The Crocs being hot, hot take. <laughs> Probably the uh, oceans, take. hot take. Uh huh. Um, flip cup, definitely flip a hot cup, take. Full hot take <laughs> for a youth group game. My, my Non-alcoholic old. parents, right. parents out there. Right, right, right. Because uh, all of the parents of any students that come to <laughs> anything, any that you do, they all listen to Kingdom. A hundred percent, I've heard. Um, but we are actually here today to actually talk to you about apologetics Let's because go. you read a giant book. <laughs> yes. On a, poly- a thick one. I do. I on do. Two C's. So, uh, I'm going to start off with the question of like, why apologetics? Like, why are you into them? Why are they important? Yeah. Well, I, and we talked a little bit, um, when we were out to eat about this, but I fully believe that experiencing God, uh, with emotions, with your feelings is really, really important. 
But I also think probably equally important to that, we're both emotional feeling beings and also have a brain and have logic. And I think that's a gift from God that God gave to us. And just in my time witnessing with different people, it's like some people, yes, that experience with God is what's going to get them saved and change their lives and transform everything about them. But sometimes to get that foot in the door to the experience, Mm -hmm. you've got to break down some intellectual walls Mm -hmm. that if we're not willing to engage or we never have an answer on a logical level, um, we're ill-equipped. And Peter says, um, always be ready to give an account, to give a reason for the hope, for the faith, for the belief that you have. And I have not always... Um, been deep into apologetics. And I even still approach this topic like super humbly. Like I do not claim to be an expert in apologetics, uh, but I am learning and I am studying and I am pretty deep into it um, because I've just seen, even there's a statistic out there that says eight in every 10 youth group kids or kids who are saved in the Christian faith will walk away when they go to college. And that was like a big national study that happened and that just broke me. And I was like, okay, clearly we're missing something. Mm. Clearly there's something broken about the way that we're doing youth or the way we're doing church. And what I kind of found is the students who dove deep, I mean, real deep into why do I believe what I believe? Not just um, what have I experienced? Although that's wonderful. And I want to affirm that and say, that's great. Not just what have I felt? Although again, that's wonderful and great, but really why logically Am I compelled to believe what I believe? Those are the ones who I've seen when they're challenged, they don't waver, they don't compromise. And so I just think it's important. Mm. Everybody's wired differently. Some will be more emotional. Some will be more logical. I definitely fall more on the logical end by nature anyway. And so to me, the times when I encounter God the most, even though I'm a worship pastor, or not whenever worship's building and it's, it's hype. It's great. It's whenever I'm reading that big thick book and I'm like, wow, God, you're so cool. Like you did this. And so I think being able to reach yeah. both types, sorry, cut me no, off at any point. No, no, that's great. I, I think it's cool. Um, and because I think that I'm excited to hear about this because one, when I heard the term apologetics, I, my brain has an association with the word apology. Yeah. And I, I, not thinking about it from a, a place of def, uh, the ability, I guess, to defend something. Yeah. And even that word makes me like, well, why do I have to defend something? Yeah. If it's true to me, like go through. Mm-hmm. And so like, I'm interested in having the conversation because it, it is so new to me. Yeah. Um, and I am also a person that relies, I not relies. I think I'm more naturally prone to the, um, more emotional experience of worship and feeling like that's when I connect to God most. Yeah. And so to have a different perspective, super valuable. Yeah. So for anybody listening and we've thrown out the word apologetics a couple times now, um, can you like to you, it doesn't have to be for everybody, but like what is apologetics? Like, what do you, what do you mean when you say that word? Yeah. First off, I would also just say whenever I'm talking about this, I'm all for the emotional. I hope I made that clear. Like what you're saying, like that's phenomenal. What is apologetics? It's being able to provide that reasoning for the faith that will appeal not just to the heart, but also to the mind, you Mm -hmm. know, and to both. And so that we're not limiting it to just one sphere. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whenever somebody says, all right, well, how can the Bible be true? If my science teacher is telling me this, Or my professor in college. If you guys watch that movie, God's Not Dead. If you guys watch that, the very first one, there's this scene in it. And I I don't really like Christian movies. I know. I don't like oceans. I don't like Christian movies. But um, there's the opening scene in it where the professor is basically like, um, God is dead. And he makes everyone write that down. And I watched that when I was like however old. And I was like, yeah, right. That doesn't happen. And then I went to college. And I had a professor in a psych course I took who said – if you believe God is real, you're not going to pass my class because it goes against everything I'll be teaching. And I thought, Oh, I better get ready. And I went up to him and I was like, I'm not dropping your class, but also I'm a Christian. And he's like, let's see how it goes. I was like, bet. (laughs) And we went on that journey for 16 weeks. But, um, I say all that to, to just say apologetics. What is it? It's providing a defense of the faith so that in the intellectual realm, we're able to hold our own. Hmm. 
so like what are in your kind of like study of yeah. this or exploration of this topic like what are are there like what are a couple of like specific uh are there specific moments or stories or mm. kind of uh examples examples that you've come up with that, that you found fundamentally maybe changed how you viewed something or provided you found to be fundamentally helpful whenever you're talking through that with somebody else. Yeah. Um, tell me if this is what you're asking, cut me off. I won't be offended, but I mean, myself as a first case scenario, like born in a Christian household, grew up all that really rededicated my life to Christ when I was 16. And what brought me back to that point of rededication was a deep, deep, deep dive into does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Can I justify this? Can I defend this? And months of just research and diving that led me to the point of this is undeniable on both the experiential and the logical front. And then since then, um, just in conversations, there was this one youth kid who, if we sat down and took a test, he'd, blow me out of the water 10 times. I mean, genius, like 15 had full like ride scholarships or yeah. on the Bible or like, no, in general, in general, 15 year old full ride scholarships to universities already mm -hmm. like that type of intellectual. Mm -hmm. And he'd sit there with me and he'd just say, all right, well in the garden of Eden, then how do you explain this? And how do you explain that? How do you explain the other? And it was weeks of just providing him with answers that again, like I said, open up the door for him to say, okay, this is actually something I can get behind in my mind too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm open to an idea and an experience, you know, and vice versa. Some people need the experience and then the intellect will grow from there, but we just need to embrace both. And when you were doing that research, did you go through books like more than a carpenter case for Christ, like all yeah. of that kind of stuff? Yeah. And that would, did that kind of lead you into different places or? Oh, a hundred percent. A lot of those, but also a lot of like YouTubers, mm -hmm. a lot of YouTube uh, apologists, um, different books, different just articles online. Yeah. You know. Um, so I, I have a very interesting question. So um, I don't believe that the Bible is a book of answers. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that every question has an answer. Yeah. Right. Um, and so like, even when you're talking about going with that, you know, super smart guy who's asking all these different questions, mm -hmm. how, as you're going through apologetics or even as you're studying yourself and you're going through these things, um, how do you kind of differentiate between like, mm -hmm. I'm going to go figure out or come up with logic or rationale to mm -hmm. explain X, Y, and Z Yeah. versus like, this is something that's beyond me. This is going to sound contradictory, but part of log coming to a logical conclusion, God is real, is also understanding logically a belief in God means some things will be unknowable about mm -hmm. him, right? Mm -hmm. And so I actually don't see that as contradictory, like accepting the fact that, yes, well, we understand the full nature of the Trinity. No. This side of eternity, some answers are just like, God is God. Right. And we're, if you accept God, then some things are not going to be fully comprehensible. No, the Trinity is just water, dude. You can explain it. <laughs> H2O. That's not true. That's not true, by the way. You know what I'm saying, though? No, absolutely. Does that make sense? It does. And I think that I think it's this really interesting thing, too, of um, like, I, I, I think when we when I think about logic and rationale and different things in my mind, I think of the emotional moments and I think of those, those experiences that I've mm -hmm. had. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think back to specific ones and I apply logic and rationale to those moments mm -hmm. of going like the only way that this would have happened is if yeah. God is real. And that's not something that you can really like, that's not a reasoning that makes sense to other people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and I, would you say like apologetics are like, uh, how did you even get into like studying them? Like, was there a purpose behind it? Was it a class? Like, well, it was really that when I was 16 Okay. and deciding you really am I going to thick books on fully devote my life to this and just dove in from yeah. there. So you have the, the thick book, right? Yes. Can you tell me <laughs> like something from the thick book that like was like 
you read really like, rocked your world like like a story like, i think i think the best argument from an intellectual perspective this is my opinion the best I looked at drummer Matt. I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. Don't um, no, don't acknowledge the, him. <laughs> he's over don't there. Make okay. That <laughs> um, I think really the best argument logically for me, whenever it came to apologetics, was the moral argument for God, which you guys have probably heard this, but it was new assume to me. that I have not. <laughs> it was new to me whenever I heard it. It's basically okay if God if. If God does not exist, this is not taking into equation the Christian God, okay, Jesus. This is just saying God in general. So it's mainly a theist or atheist argument here. If God doesn't exist, then nothing is inherently right or wrong. And so if I were to go do the most heinous thing that we all would agree about, and you were to say that's wrong, I would say why? And this is helpful because when like talking to atheists, what do they oftentimes say? Well, how could a good God of the Bible allow the things in the Old Testament? How could he mm. command killing? How could he command all this? And I say, before we address that, why does it matter? Why, mm. why is it wrong? Why was it wrong, theoretically, for somebody to go kill another person? What, how can you substantiate your argument? Otherwise, it's just your opinion against mine. And who's really right other than majority roles? Does that make sense? It does. Uh, my question would be then like, so like you could look at other, or could we look at other civilizations that mm -hmm. did not have the God? I guess like was in that case, I guess like other civil civilizations, like they had, they had laws. Mm -hmm. Were they all based on the deities that they like believed in? Or like, did they always use yeah. God as a book of rules? Yeah. Like in every culture. I think in, uh, like Romans one talks about this, that we are, well, from the very beginning, we're image carriers of God, right? We carry his image and the law is written in every man's heart. What mm -hmm. is right? What is wrong? We all have an awareness of that. It's a matter of if we suppress it or if we allow it. And so this is like my, that, that argument would not say, yes, people who have not heard about Jesus or people right. groups who've not heard about Jesus cannot be, cannot be moral or cannot be good. It would just say they can't substantiate why at the end of the day, something is good or something is not good. Hmm. Does that make sense? It's like, you can still be, you can still do good things. That also has to do with like a universal code of morals. Sure. Like, a these things are bad for everybody. Yeah. These things are good for everybody. And, yeah. That would have differed like locally for different people, like contextually now or 4,000 years ago. Like, yeah. The way that they thought. What I think is, is like where I'm trying to go with this, what I think is really interesting is I think it also depends on um, the heart of the person who's looking into it. Yeah. And where they're coming at it from. Right. Yep. Because there's a big difference in in trying to find an explanation for why something's wrong mm -hmm. and trying yes. to find an explanation for why something's right. Like yeah. there's a very big difference between those two. Or just trying to figure out what, what is it? Correct. I'm open. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that a lot of people, I, I feel like I've heard people fall to apologetics um, as this way of trying to prove people one way or another. And I think it's an issue. And like, I don't know how, like just in general of how do you deal with that as a pastor? Like you want to have this basis, you want to lead them to the gospel. And maybe that's mm -hmm. just what the answer is. And that's all the answer is. Right. But whenever you you're getting questions like this, people are looking for a reason mm -hmm. to, for it to be wrong, for yeah. it not to be real. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? Well, just as a pastor? Yeah. You, it's, it comes back to what you were saying, Corey. A lot of it is discerning. What are they really asking? Mm -hmm. What is the real question mm -hmm. that a lot of these con like a lot, even the youth references I gave you, these are coming from Christian kids, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to dive in. They know what they believe. They, whatever. A lot of times whenever it's, uh, you know, somebody who maybe, I don't know, you have to judge what's the heart behind it. Yeah. Not judge, but you have to determine and mm -hmm. discern all right, do I need to even pivot this to just be a loving conversation between you and me? Right. To just I, say, 
couldn't agree more. Sorry. You no, you're me. good. <laughs> you're good. I have like this personal story that just popped up and I feel like I want to share. Yeah. I went, don't touch my mic. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your heads. Um, no, when my wife and I got married, yeah. we got married in Nashville and we had a very small wedding and she basically, we had never lived in the same city. We never spent more than a weekend together before we were married and moved wow. to Pittsburgh. Yeah. So she basically, we packed up her whole life into a trailer and a car and like drove it to Pittsburgh. Yeah. And as we're doing that, you'll learn, you're newly engaged. Yeah. You're going to learn this. You get a lot of gifts when you get married. A lot of them you don't need and you won't use. They just take up space. (laughs) No, no, no. That's that's very special. (laughs) And so one of the things she got, she got this really nice KitchenAid mixer from a, a family friend. And our apartment, our first apartment was literally 700 square feet. Yeah. So tiny. Our kitchen was so tiny. And I was like, babe, we, let's get rid of some of this stuff. Let's return this back to Target or wherever you get it. And then when we get a new apartment house, like I, we will buy another KitchenAid. Yeah. And God bless her. But AG had like a real hard time with letting go of the KitchenAid. Mm-hmm. And I struggled to find out like, babe, like what's the big deal? Like we, yeah. we don't need this KitchenAid right now. We're not going to use yeah. it. We do need whatever she, I don't know, whatever else we have. It could be more yeah. practical yeah. to pay the rent. <laughs> like, <it does. laughs> yeah. Uh, and I remember hard like time. she just, there was like a clear attitude. She was hurt and for days. And then finally I realized that it had nothing to do with the KitchenAid mixer. Mm. It's just the fact it was part of the fact that she had picked up her whole life. And this KitchenAid mixer was a a present from a friend in their family that was like specifically, Mm -hmm. I want to bless Abby with this really Mm -hmm. nice KitchenAid mixer. Mm -hmm. And so it was just asking her to let go of another piece of something that was special that was just to her based on the life that she was kind of. Yeah. That her life was evolving. It was changing. Mm. And at the heart was like, it was never about the actual KitchenAid mixer. Yeah. Yeah. It was about the fact that like everything is changing. Yeah. And this was given to me mm-hmm. by somebody very special at a specific time in my life. Yeah. And I'm holding on to it. Yeah. So like identifying yeah. where's the heart, where's this, at, where's this attitude? Mm-hmm. Where's this question? Where's the defensiveness? This is a great lesson for relationships in general. Mm-hmm. You learn is like being able to slow down and be able to listen to I think I believe like the Holy Spirit and to your partner, but to know where is that? What's the root cause of this frustration, this conversation, yeah. this feeling? Because we were always so quick. We talk about to just try to fix it. Yeah. Well, if it's such a big deal, I'll buy you another kitchen name mixer. Yeah. And that actually wouldn't have fixed it. It wouldn't. Yeah. I would never have been in a place to actually give her the space to actually talk about that. That's really good. I I think bringing it even even maybe a little bit more into like our topic, like. That's a perfect analogy. Brandon For literally what? just went like what you had to say. No, 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 no. That's not all but I meant. I'm going to bring it back, back for you. I think it's a perfect analogy. I think it literally is perfect. An example that I even think of somebody I've had two. Well, I've had multiple times with so two examples. Same question. If God's good, why do all these bad things happen? Mm-hmm. The one time it was somebody who they went on to basically explain I'm a Christian, I believe in all this, but it's kind of just this irking in me that kind of creates this barrier between. And so again, having the answer for that can really help tear down that wall. Another situation with somebody and I'm sitting there and it was not from that place at all. It was a very argumentative, aggressive, if you will. And I just said, well, why do you ask that? You know, Mm -hmm. and give me some examples. And they list off a bunch of things. I'm like, it seems like you're really passionate about this. Like, have you like, you know, give me a little bit more where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Have this big, long combo, get to all this hidden hurt that they've experienced, all these things that have happened to them. And it's an entirely different process. At the end of the day, it's the same answer. But I think we've only seen apologetics from the point of view of I'm coming at you and I'm going to win this fight and I'm right and you're wrong and I'm going to debate, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's normally in a debate context that we see this when in reality, you can sit there with somebody and pastor them and give them an answer that's going to cause them to have healing yeah. and see God isn't this monster. Right. And man, you started the conversation talking about this idea of like two levels, two ways of experiencing God. Yeah. Right? There were, or, and it's like one could be through the worship setting and that yeah. kind of emotionalism 
yeah. that you feel. And then the other is kind of logically. Too. Yeah. And for people too, like they maybe what what that young person is coming to you with has had experiences in his or her life. Yeah. That have been very powerful and yeah. very hurtful. Yeah. And so they're being exposed to this idea of like, and they're wrestling with like, God, why is my experience so bad? Yeah. And to respond to them logically. Yeah. Isn't going to work the same way. You have to do both. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to, you have to meet them where they're at, which is in the most, tell me, tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what's going on. You yeah. know? And, but then at the end of the day, they're still left with the same question. Right. So it's discerning how well, to, well, here's the thing is that apologetics are not facts. Mm hmm. And I don't think you should look at them that way. If they were facts, then you couldn't debate them. Yeah. Right? Like if facts, if we just accept them as true, then there would be no debates. There, would no, there wouldn't be any kind of like, I'm going to try to logically explain this to you because it would just be accepted. Does that make sense? Or there would be a, yeah. a mathematical way to get there. Yeah. Whatever it is. And so like I, I think it's interesting, interesting of like you, you know, uh, you said of like about apologetics being used in like this kind of debate format mm -hmm. and where that's not necessarily what it needs to be, but I feel like that's what it's, it's what is yeah. led with it a lot yeah. of times. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if we go like outside of this, of, of looking at like debates and things like that, a lot of time you go political, you go whatever it is. And a lot of those beliefs are based on where you grew up, who mm -hmm. your parents are, what, how, what your experience was growing up, like yeah. all of these different your race, the, Correct. all these things. Yeah, absolutely. Color, yeah. All of these things. And so does like I, I'm curious, like does apologetics kind of have those same things? Because I think there's one thing of like a book called uh, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell, where he's mm -hmm. like going to Rome and going to Jerusalem and going to the Middle East and looking like for scrolls that are thousands of years old and like mm -hmm. doing all this crazy research of looking at original texts and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I, I think that it's a different thing to sit here. And once again, the question is, does it matter? Right. But there's another thing of trying to convince somebody of the world is 13 billion years old or the world is, Mm -hmm. 10,000 years old. Like mm -hmm. if it was a fact, we would all just agree on it. Yeah. And the whole point again of apologetics is point to the gospel, right? you know, and when you lose sight of the purpose, you're just going to misuse it. Mm -hmm. The entire point is get people to Jesus, so get good. people to the gospel. Yeah. God, I think, no, I think it's, you're right on like any time in those conversations. If, if my ego is telling me that I'm going to you impose my will on this conversation mm -hmm. so I can be proven right. Mm -hmm. And that's the driving thing is like, I need you which to see never, it my way, which will never be happen. genuine conversion either. Or anyway, that won't be a genuine faith. Someone's coming to if yeah. it's just coercion. Yeah. So yeah. that's not even what we want, right. but you will fall into that if you just want to win a fight. Yeah. Mm. So I guess in a way we've got to take back the stigma and not stigma. We don't want the stigma. We got to get rid of the stigma around it to mm. show this is actually a really valuable, good tool to have in your pocket. But like anything, you have to learn how to use it. Yeah. Right. Otherwise you'll misuse it. Yeah. And the thing you keep it like, it's like you said, I think the word of God in the same way, it can be a light into your feet. Mm -hmm. your feet mm -hmm. it can also be a hammer that you use to beat somebody up and yeah. make somebody feel really condemned and really horrible yeah. people have done that a lot of times yeah um and so as well as like the thing of like this is a cool thing for us to learn and keep in our pocket but it's also just a cool thing for us to dive into an experience yeah. to expand our understanding and with more knowledge like does that impact the way i can approach the text yeah does that impact the way i approach creation yeah all those things like yep. it's just opening the goal i think in all of these conversations mm. and different if you look at different like would you say apologetics is a theology no not i wouldn't okay. uh I the goal of anyway into any of those things i would say though is like if i go in with the intention of like i want to be able to expand my view mm -hmm. of how i see the divine of how mm -hmm. i see god then i'm coming from a, a place of like uh being humbly with my hands open like for, and yeah. it's like saying I, I want to learn more instead of being like I want to, which we've kept, we've solidified now using it as a way to, to win an argument. Yeah, not great. No, no. What are you thinking? Me? I I just have a question. Like, uh, wait, can I say one thing? No, on that? please. Can you hold? It? Okay, please. I'm so sorry. You're in. You guys are in charge. But I think what you said is so powerful in this sense, and not to beat it to death. We all agree it's not just a combative thing. But what is Jesus? He's full of grace and truth, mm -hmm. right? And so, but as broken humans, 
we're never able to fully embrace both of those and people will fall on one end of the spectrum either either it's all truth and what you're saying i'm gonna beat you over the head with the bible so that you know how bad you are and how crummy you are and broken and all this or it's all grace which is a hundred percent beautiful but without the truth and it, it without it being both interplaying with one another you never fully comprehend both mm. and so i think it's so important to when you're pre- when you're presenting things to people have in the back of your head am i presenting this like jesus would in a way that is communicating yes this is the truth this is the gospel this is the romans woe is me wretched man that i am but also there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ in the next passage, right? Am I, am I showing people both? The yes, I have to understand the truth of how messy and broken I am, but it is for the sake of understanding how beautiful His grace is. Some mm-hmm. theologians said it's impossible to understand the beauty of grace without understanding the gravity of sin. And you've got to understand both, but it's not to con- condemn people to hell. Mm-hmm. It's to say, this is how good our God is. Mm-hmm. And that's also why theology does matter, which you brought yeah. up that word. It's like, that's a whole nother thing that, my goodness, people have this theology about God that he's just so against them and waiting to smite them down. And I'm like, real theology is going to show you that's not the heart of God at all. Mm-hmm. He's grace and he's truth. Mm. He's, he's loving and he's just. He's both of these things that when you really get to know the heart of God, it'll change everything. Sorry. No. I love that. Mm. You you kind of hit on that, and I loved it. No, I, I think that, you know, given that you pastor to 15, 16-year-old college or high school students through college to adults, right? We're both married. Corey's a bit older than me, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? How old do you think Taylor is? <laughs> I don't want to answer. I don't know. We no, started. Actually, I feel like we did this at the dinner. We did, and I can't remember. You you did think I was older than I was. Did I? You did. I remember. It's because what you was accomplished the so much, Taylor. I think he said it was like That's 37, why. 38. I was like, yeah, I was still going to say, yeah, 30s. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm in my 30s, but there's a big difference between 38 and 31. You were dude. 35. Isn't that what you said? No. No. He's 31. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> he's like 43 <laughs> really no, i'm 37 okay I'm okay okay <laughs> um cool. but it, pastoring Lessons. to all of these different people yeah and everywhere in between right yeah and as you're approaching these questions as you're pastoring as you are talking about the message of jesus you're talking about yeah. the gospel yeah. right but as this kind of these apologetic things come up do you find is there a difference i guess in how you approach those messages and what is the difference between if I am speaking to an 18 year old kid or I'm speaking to my dad yeah. or I'm speaking yeah. to one of my friends? Like, how does that 100%. differ? Yeah, 100 percent. And I would say just like any topic, take apologetics out of the equation entirely. Right. Mm-hmm. Just like any topic. If I'm talking to a 14 year old who's never walked into church before, I'm going to be a lot, lot change my approach a whole lot compared to the six-year-old who's been born and raised in a seasoned saint, you know, right. um, it's going to look a whole lot different, but I will say this. I think for younger people, let's say middle school through college, we way, way, way underestimate their intelligence. And whenever we, um, you know, as a younger person, I would have hundred percent agreed with him. When I was like 18 years old, I was like, I know everything. <laughs> now I'm 37. I'm like, I don't know if I do. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I'm like, I guess I'm, I'm talking from like biblical truths, right? That we're like, okay, well, this is like some deeper theology or whatever. And I don't, if we can sidetrack a little on theology. Let's go. I mean, how important is that? But we're like, oh, you're only 17. You don't really need to know X, Y, and Z. And it's like, let's just give, let's give even young people, the Bible for what it really is Mm -hmm. not mask it, not counterfeit it. And I don't think anybody does this maliciously or intentionally, but I just think we downplay what can a high schooler handle? What can a college student handle? I mean, if you're actually around schools and universities, it's like, 
oh my gosh, we need to be diving in deeper than a cute little right. <laughs> fluffy, yeah. you know? Right. So, okay. I have an interesting question. For okay. You. I'll try to have an interesting answer. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So apologetics is not what we're saying right now. Yeah. Is that apologetics and, and the, the, the rationale, the logic behind it should not be used to like, you don't want to get into like this fight with it and you yeah. don't really want to use it to defend yourself or to attack someone else with it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, my question is, is if we all have a good, an- if you, if somebody asks you a question that you don't know, every single one of us has a good answer to it, which is, I don't know. Let yeah. me, let me, let me look at it and I'll try to figure yeah. it out. Right. Why then do you study and read your thick book of apologetics? If like of where I'm getting at is like if the message is all about Jesus and, God, and mm-hmm. Jesus, the gospel. And if somebody asks you something you don't know, you can say, I don't know. And I'll get back to you. And mm-hmm. then you can like go do research and look at it. Like, yeah. why do you study it? Like you personally, well, like I was going to say selfishly. Yeah. Because like I said, I feel like it allows me that and a deep dive on theology, both and apologetics and theology. Give me a deeper understanding of who God is. And I feel like whenever I can understand the, you know, indescribable design of the cellular structure mm-hmm. that will just make me more in awe of God. You know, Mm -hmm. and so selfishly for me, not even necessarily selfishly, I view it as like a wow, God, how amazing that you're able to do all this. And then, like I said, I, I don't think it's a defense mechanism. I don't think it's, I'm a winning argument, but I do think it's nice to be able to give somebody an answer in the best socially intelligent way that you can, Mm -hmm. right? That it's not, someone's coming to me and they want, they have a genuine question. I don't want to, um, not be able to provide them something that will help them. Are there other like key topics? So we covered morality. Yeah. Right. And you know, young earth, early earth. Yeah. Uh, What are the other like big kind of things that come up in apology, like in the book? Yeah. Um, History, the historical truth or um, rationale for why do we believe the Bible? everything that we're basing is off of the Bible, why would we believe this book more than right. another book? Or mm-hmm. why would we take that? And if we're basing the Bible off the Bible. Why do we believe it? We're basing our belief off the Bible. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to follow this faith. Okay. Why do I put such weight in this okay. book? Mm-hmm. You know? And when you get back and this is the best thing too, for like, um, well, not necessarily the best thing, but <laughs> a good tool for, okay. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Isn't that like one of the most significant questions any Christian can ask themselves and consider? And whenever you look, not just at the, okay, what do Matthew, Mark, Luke, John have to say, but what does Josephus have to say? What does the 500 witnesses who saw him after, what do they have to say? Right. And you can dive in a little bit deeper. It gives me this assurance Mm -hmm. that, Okay, this is both, yes, in the Bible, but it's also defendable. Translations, copies, like so many things you can Mm. point back to that if I cannot trust the Bible, even just as a historical book, take out the, you know, spiritual ramifications and all that. If I can't just take this as reliable, then I can't really trust anything before 1500. We won't know anything about it any time before that because no other book comes close like even just statistically to the bible Mm -hmm. you know Hmm. i think that's a powerful element the historical side um i think it's pretty much anything in the bible what like anything in the bible that you can think of somebody has like gone down this apologetic route sure yeah with it just everything Every argument of literal. I want to know. I want to know what the like, yeah what those arguments are. I'm interested. Oh, we don't like have to get into them now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, what would be the apologist? Apologists? Apologists? That's somebody mm-hmm. that studies apologetics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. I, I listened. Yeah. He, he threw it out there earlier. I got it now. I was like, oh, <laughs> that sounds fancy. Uh, like, what's their their 
like when they look at a story like Noah's Ark, what do they say? Fully knowing that I don't want to get in the rabbit hole of like, did two of every it, animal uh, actually get on the boat? <laughs> right. okay. Like, I don't want to die on that hill with somebody. I agree. But I also right. do want to know, what do you think? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's why a lot of this is really, really good for, we're all believers and let's sit down and that's fun. Let's hash mm-hmm. it out and have a good time mm-hmm. tearing into our different right. secondary tier beliefs. The goal with of apologetics, again, for other believers is get to that or for outside of believers is get to that top shelf, right? Get to salvation, get to the gospel. The 1942. And then, right. and then let's right. fight about the rest and have fun doing it. Right. You know, <laughs> I love like, that. I love good, that so wrestle, much. wrestle. I mean, but we've talked about it before and yeah. in the Jewish culture, they would still like, they encourage this. The wrestling with the text was part of what their, their, their going to temple would That's be. That's what their church was. It was defense. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, we talked about the idea of like lawyers of that day were, were people that defended the text yeah and they would have conversations and that i think that in my experience i think that there's something kind of that's happened to evangelical christianity where it's made it feel like if you're if you're not all in Mm -hmm. on everything and don't and if you question that shows doubt doubt equals lack of faith Mm. that's what i feel like i kind of what i held to me growing up as a younger believer and it it is it was not as encouraged to just go in and say like, Hey, let's sit down and like, let's really wrestle with this text yeah. and the history and the things that we know now that Culture. they didn't know yeah. 1500 years ago. And, um, I think that in those contexts, the conversations are really fun. Yeah. Yes. hundred percent. And good. Um, Brandon, would you agree or disagree with this statement that I'm about to make? Oh boy. It's not like a, it's, uh, so looking at disagree. No, I'm kidding. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. No, I'm set. Cut it. Cut it. Um no, don't actually cut it, drummer. Okay. okay. Um Matt, drummer Matt. That I feel like drummer Matt. We love you. I feel like a lot of pe apologetics is seen. Uh uh-huh. I feel like as this like almost negative thing. Or this thing yeah. that's like in the background. Yeah. And a lot of people don't dive into. I mean, you have a very I, I would say that you have a very Uh, like rich history of like the text and faith and being around it your whole life. And this isn't really something that you would go like I've dived into this. Mm -hmm. And here's what I would want to know if you agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. I would actually argue that you have a lot. Yeah. Because looking at context, Mm -hmm. looking at original languages, trying to figure out cultural context of the time periods. Yeah. All of those things still fall underneath. Well, yeah. And it's built into even your framework. It's built into the way you even mentally grasp things like, and this is why it's so like some people may not like apologetics, but you'll base everything off of it inherently because apologetic, like Christian apologetics will give you that reason mm-hmm. to even be able to quote John three sixteen Sure. In a logical way. Yeah. Cause logic's founded in that. I think it's the same way that a lot of people don't like socialism. But they really enjoy some of their I'm social, out on this one. Some of their social programs. Yeah. Like, it's like I'm not one of those. <laughs> but you know, I really enjoy right. the programs that you know. I played the fifth on this topic. Right. I, I feel like I don't know. No, it's true though. I, think I, it's I like, just don't know so enough did, about politics. I, well, it could be in, the the reality is, I didn't. I, I until a couple of weeks ago wouldn't have had the language to say what apologetics is, mm-hmm, like the mm-hmm. study of it and the practice of it, and learning it. But I would with more context now and be like, Oh, I a hundred percent have been doing this for the last decade of yeah. my life. I mean, I and would it, say, and I think that you, you asked of like, is it a theology? And I would say it's just the reasoning behind what your theology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it can help you develop. Correct. What that theology is. What is theology? <laughs> Drummer man. Drummer. <laughs> we should, you know, Drummer this is Matt. important to answer. We should answer this. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brandon's the guest, so we'll make him answer. What do you, what yeah. is, theology i think theology oh i'm really bad at defining terms but i looked this I up think, earlier because i, was I think it is for sure like you're both i don't know how good wrong you define it <laughs> no, you're how right. you would describe and define who is god what is his faith what is his belief system mm. yeah you know is that actually, close i mean it's, it's, it's really great it's like Going into like the nature of God. I have the yeah Who the study God? of the yeah. nature of God and religious belief. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. But here's the other deal. Whenever we make it all about doctrine and theology, it's this weird tension that we have to play. We make it all about theology, doctrine, or apologetics. We miss everything. The point of theology is to lead to adoration of God. But how oftentimes do we not use it that way? It's the same thing with apologetics. It's the same with all these things. It's here's a tool. Mm. Here's a method to get people to awe of God. And some people, they need to walk into a church church service and get blown away by the presence and glory of God. But sometimes I got to sit with somebody and hear them and address their questions to mm-hmm. get them to be willing to cross that threshold. Yeah. To get in the building. And for me, I mean, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, but I would say, what is the Bible? Like the book that we read? Mm-hmm. That is apologetics in a sense, very much. And for me, when I read that book in 2017, I was at a different place and being able to to read his account of these stories and his interpretation and the, all the context and history he brought it, Rob Bell brought into it. Mm-hmm. Like that brought me, that gave me fresh eyes to see the text again mm-hmm. and to approach the Bible again, not thinking it's something archaic and mm-hmm. old and right. brutal, but it actually provided a different lens yeah. that let right. me see actually the heart of God in the text. Exactly. Again. Right. Exactly. He, really powerful. Have you studied it all, Brandon? Um, of how apologetics or if apologetics, I guess phrase it that way, uh, has changed over time or changed over history? Well, I think it's changed like many things to address the needs of the day. Right. So right now, I mean, 300 years ago might've been, Oh, I don't know what date, but about is the earth the center of the universe or (laughs) is the sun or what is this? Right. Nowadays, it's going to be more, philosophical what is truth is there truth is Mm. your truth my truth or is your truth yours and mine is mine is there any way of knowing right so i think it it shifts in a way to meet the needs of the day and what questions are needing answered yeah because if we look at it in a sense i don't even know if they would have used that word but apologetics has had to exist for as long as the text has been available to more people yeah because it's like really, since it was first printed, right? Yeah. Because we would have to, like some form of it has had to exist. So I, I, I was Googling the other day of apologetics that are like in the Bible. Uh-huh. And it, one, I'm not going to read the whole verse, but there was one, there was a site that said that um, Paul is speaking in Acts 17. Uh-huh. And a lot of theologians show that as like the first example of an apologetic Mm-hmm. When in, in with in terms of Jesus mm-hmm. is Paul speaking in Acts 17. And so like that is a historical and a contextual clue to like, you know, it goes back to even uh, when Paul was alive, which was 50, 60 years, like right after, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it has always been around. Mm-hmm. Just what, what was it called? Yeah. Or was it just called like conversation back then? Well, and it's a lot like the word revival that we're talking about all around the country nowadays. Talk about a loaded term Let's with a <laughs> lot. No, with a lot of uh, both good and negative baggage to it. Sure. Word revival. It's a lot like apologetics. It's like, all right, there's a lot of people who would see a lot of good and their husband a lot of good. There's also been a lot of bad sure. with how it's Speaking been Speaking in tongues. What about it? Speaking in time. It's the same thing. People have the, oh, yeah, yeah, the same yeah. Like, like Some people are just like, experience negative experience, yeah. like really abusive kind of experiences. A hundred percent. And so, again, so much of it comes back to the heart behind it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And what are we trying to get out whenever we're using it or, yeah, you know? And how, so what's a good, if, if for somebody listening or for me, yeah, us, like what is a good like pulse check that we can do? How, what, what advice would you give me or anybody else in this of like, how do we check ourselves when we find getting into these conversations? Like, or what are the practices that you use personally? Well, and we've hit on this a couple of times. First off, going to it, I don't know, is always an okay answer. You know, um, if I start to feel like I'm more concerned about being right than hearing and listening and being responsible with the person I'm sitting with, then I need to take a step back, mm-hmm. right? Because then I'll just mm. slip into a whole bunch of stuff that can get yeah. real ugly. God. 
Oh, I was just thinking about the revival thing. And I was like, well, <laughs> it that that question actually it applies to apologetics, but then like, how would you look at like when you s- see all the stuff about revival? Like, how do we even check our hearts on that yeah. and how we're viewing that? And speaking in tongues and all the stuff. Like, yeah, I, I think it, it really same comes down to my glory or his, you know, is, you know, is an event that's happening. Is it designed and is it pointing to a person or is it pointing to Christ? Right. And if, if I'm in a conversation and I'm more in it and about it because I want to have for whatever, I don't know, gained some respect or gained a win. And so I can Mm -hmm. brag about it and same with these other topics, right? Revival. If I want to put on a great event so that lots of people will come and I can say, I started that. Mm Mm-hmm. Clearly there's a heart check there that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. If the intention is I want to create a space, people can show up, experience the presence of God and be wrecked and changed. And I'm not going to get in the way of that, but I'm going to just try to steward it the best I can. Then that's great. But it comes Mm -hmm. down to the heart, the Mm -hmm. intention. Is it about me? Is it about him? Is it about my glory, his glory, my fame, his fame. And ultimately we're the only ones that can really answer that question. Mm Mm-hmm. Of what our intentions are when we yeah. go into those things. Yeah. Yeah. Those conversations, those moments. Those... Yeah. Is uh, is apologetics, do you think it's actually like a, a category of things? Or do you think that like there are certain things that are like filed under apologetics and that's all that they are? Or there were a bunch of different things and somebody just wanted a name to put them all under and so they called it apologetics. There's a difference. Do you understand what the difference is? No. (laughs) Of like, I feel like Michael Scott explain it. Like I'm a seven year old. (laughs) No. So like there are a bunch of people who are trying to understand, uh, or trying to rationalize is God real Uh or morality or truth or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And really honestly, like those are just, this just philosophy. Like it's, it's rationale. It's logic. Like there Mm -hmm. doesn't need to be a special, name Label. for it yeah but then there were all these conversations and somebody just smacked a label onto it mm-hmm. of this is apologetics yeah or are there things that are like only apologetics and they're nothing else like they don't fall outside of that at all does that make sense yeah i think i don't really know though i don't oh, know we'll talk next week yeah we'll yeah. talk next <laughs> week have me back i don't know yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out this like stigma around it. Uh-huh. Right? Of like as we've had this talk and I think that over the years like I have like the closest thing I could read is is like more than a carpenter. Mhm. Case for case for Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh like reading those things which it, it, it 100% is but where does the stigma come from of like this is a bad thing and this is just going to cause arguments and like people are just going to get mad. Like where mm-hmm. does that come from? Why does it exist and how do we overcome that and it's, not deal with it? That exists because that's what has been how the tool mm-hmm. has been put in front of us. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen the videos on YouTube or at least I have go through of like where it's like this is a person that is an evolutionist and like then you have this person mm-hmm. that's defending and doing like and talking about why Noah's Ark Mm -hmm. is literally real. And I feel like it's always more often than not pitted against two people against each other, not listening to each other Mm -hmm. and never really shown the conversation of of multiple believers talking about Noah's Ark is not really something you see a lot of. I I have, I think kingdom empowered should host a debate. (laughs) Okay. This is what I think we should do. I think we should host a debate. (laughs) And I think that we, we should have one person who, one okay, we're gonna have one person that's not Brandon, that would say the like the Earth is young, and then we're yeah. gonna have another person who says the Earth is old, and we're gonna have a debate there. But we're gonna have a third person, and the third person is gonna be debating with them too as to why it matters. <laughs> there you go. And then we'll be the fourth person together. We'll be the other one in the fire, like the you peanut. <laughs> the gallery, other one in the like, fire. Yeah, just chatting it up. Yeah. My competitive part of me wants to be like, I want to be one of the people. 
<laughs> like that's not good. well. This okay, okay. We were just talking about his glory versus your glory. I know that's Which what I'm. One of the I'm, three I'm, people do you want to be? Because it's a very important question. No, I don't want to be one of the people. I don't want to. Be no, the, the easy answer is I want to be the one who's saying it doesn't matter. Let's just look at Jesus. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I just quickly went to defensive. There we go. Clearly about your grace. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, here's grace. the other problem with what probably you just said. Your exposure to apologetics is YouTube videos of people fighting of what of what arguing. apologetics is but also the label right. of why it's considered right. why it's considered right. a negative right thing. but of course people are going to have a negative connotation if it's just two people yawn at each other for an right. hour and a right. half because the thing is <laughs> is i'm 100 percent. we're going to come up with some really clickbaity title for this like two dudes argue apologetics with pastors and i <laughs> like with a pastor and i guarantee we'll get a bunch of clicks of people thinking that we're going to sit argue. here and argue yeah about all of these different topics. Yeah. And hopefully they click on it and then hopefully you actually watch this out there and you go, oh, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. This is what there's it a different be. way yeah. to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is so good. And again, I would say this and I don't know if you're trying to wrap it or not. So you can cut me off if you want to. But like I said, it's baked into even the fundamentals. If I want to lead someone to Jesus, what what needs to be accepted? Jesus was alive. He was a real human being, fully God, fully man, died, rose again from my sins. I can have a new life because of him. That is uh, that is something that people are going to have some questions about that on some level I'm going to answer. Mm -hmm. We just wouldn't label it apologetics, yeah. but it's the same method. Correct. It's just me mm -hmm. explaining Jesus. Here's how we know he lived. Mm -hmm. Here's how we know he died. Yeah. Here's the evidence for his resurrection. Like, and it's a beautiful thing. But in that case, we wouldn't look at that and say it's apologetic. It's only that if it's two guys yelling about the ark. Right. But it can be so helpful in other contexts. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think it's even like it, I like Corey. I like this guy. I was like, <laughs> do you like nice to me meet you? Too, I you love Taylor. Like, oh, I, he loves me. Oh my god, get Rex. He <laughs> likes you. He loves me. Oh, no, that's not. Um, I love Corey too, I and I love Jummer Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Sipping this Topo Chico back there. Right. Went no, to Mexico I, for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really interesting because now I'm thinking of other things that like fit under this. That like I like. How can we have these discussions also of like points of Jesus? We're not going to get, we're not going to go back and forth, but there's all like, I literally responded to a comment the other day. Somebody had posted on Kingdom Empowered talking about all these different things. And I, I took something straight out of, out of what is the Bible that, that Corey was talking about earlier mm -hmm. um, of where it was talking about how the, the accounts of what happened at the tomb, who was there, yeah. Who saw who it's different in the gospels mm -hmm. as you go to the mm -hmm. different gospels and somebody was pointing to this as like, this is a very yeah. clear contradiction and this is why nothing is real. Yeah. And we had read in this book about how the, the fact that they're different, right? If you were trying to create something, you would make sure it was perfect around this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You would make yeah. sure that it was perfect and it wasn't fallible. Cookie cutter. Yeah. But right. Because the time, by the time that they were all put together, the gospels Correct. didn't exist together. Correct. Yeah. Until yeah, the Bible was like going through it and like, right. Sorry. So yeah. it's like they would have made sure if they were trying to bring about, pull off this huge lie like, right. that they all lined up and were like, this is the most important part of the story, guys. Yeah. Right. Let's get this right. Yeah. And, and here's what's great. Do you know who, do you know who Rob Bell is? I've heard. Not okay. hyper I think we had a little bit of conversation about this. Yeah, dinner. you showed me a book. But there's some people. I think it was What is the Bible that we're talking <laughs> okay. about right now. Yeah, yeah. But there are 100% people who hear Rob Bell's name and they're like, whoa, calm down, cool it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's so interesting is I'm thinking about this book and I'm thinking about the other books that I've read from him mm -hmm. that it, there are a lot of apologetic topics mm -hmm. but he does point it all what is the bible is basically an entire book saying why does any of this matter except exactly for Jesus? exactly why does it matter if it was a big fish or a whale mm -hmm. or no mm -hmm. fish at all mm -hmm. why does it matter you're missing the whole point yeah. of the book of jonah right yeah. like we've we we talked about this but why does it all matter and then my question which i kind of asked a minute ago was like how and we've been talking about it but like how is that 100% the way that we like position ourselves 
And how do we not let our own opinions and our own mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. things come in the way? And it, mm-hmm. it, I get like we've talked about this of, of his grace and or his like, yeah, versus me and all this kind of stuff. But yeah. it, it's hard. Well, and I also think like practical check right. is like, again, if I'm talking with Corey and I know, OK, he's already has a relationship with God. Talk about anything. Right. right? You want to talk about was it a whale or was it a. Big bass, <laughs> you a big, know, a let's, big bass. <laughs> let's have a podcast about that. Right. At the same time, if I'm having a conversation with an unbeliever and I'm not going to be able to get this to be, and, and that's the whole entire conversation. Right. It is so pointless. Right. It's so meaningless because that's not the point of it. Right. The point of it is let's get it to that. Right. Let's mm. get it to that point. So almost seeing ahead of the game, where is this conversation going to lead? Mm-hmm. How can I get it where it should go using this method? Mm-hmm. I think is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. And How then we... you get Keep good going. theology. Then you get good theology because the other thing that we've done, Western culture, Western Christianity is we have created this image of who we want God to be that in many cases, it's not who God really is mm. because we've never fully accepted the fact that is this the word of God? If I can, if I can come to that conclusion, which I would argue is I, we've been talking about apologetics will help you do except, okay, this is the word of God. What does this say about who God is? Mm. And that's what I want to base my reality and my perspective of who God is off of. Not my imagination, not my thoughts on who God should be, Mm. but who are you really, God? And Mm. I think that ties into why 8 out of 10 young people will leave the faith Mm -hmm. around the age of 18. Because whenever they go out into the real world, if you will, and they realize God isn't our, Jesus isn't our fairy genie in a bottle, they're going to throw in the towel because they don't actually have an understanding. This is who God tells you that he is. But first you've got to get to, is this the word of God or not? And then if it is, this is truth and I can take it to the bank. And, I and can it's amazing how many people uh, will have different answers for that too. Mm-hmm. Of like, yes, this is the word of God, mm-hmm. but my truth is still different than your truth. Yeah. And how that will be manipulated for different people to say different things. And I think that yeah. is also a big reason why... I mean, I, when I went, when I was junior, senior in high school and then through college, like I yeah. walked away from like the church that we had gone to as a kid growing up and didn't believe in God and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, my whole thing was because I can go to three different people and they'll tell me three different things if I ask them all the same question. Yeah. I can ask three different Christians mm-hmm. the same question and they'll mm-hmm. give me three different answers. Why? Well, here's what I think. I was also asking obscene questions. So like, <laughs> not you. <right? laughs> here's here's the other problem. We're not teaching young people. At the end of the day, the ultimate authority is not your pastor. The ultimate authority is not. If I'm talking to youth kid, and I try to tell them this, if I tell you something that is not what the Bible tells you, I'm wrong, and you should not listen to what I say, because mm-hmm. I'm not the ultimate authority. Mm-hmm. I, I hope and I pray that the teaching flows from the scripture and what the scripture teaches, but I don't want every person to have to come to a leader or a pastor mm. for every question. I want to teach them, how do you read the Bible? And you're going to get those questions answered. Right. Mm. You also brought this. Wait, time out. I have a, I have a funny story, Corey. You just got to let me tell it for just a second. Mm-hmm. You know, one time I was preaching <laughs> at college ministry Uh at our church amplify Uh uh-huh and i accidentally said that god is a woman Uh uh-huh and like it was just stopped right there like somebody cried whoa (laughs) and i was like no i i was misspoke and then i was made fun of it for a long time (laughs) but they they didn't let me they didn't trust me that what i what had come out of my mouth well we've all we've all said a few things (laughs) that we would regret (laughs) i might oh sorry no no well now i want i was trying to what you've said that you regret. Well, the other week uh, we were talking about relations. Sorry, this is totally unrelated. Whole, I want to come back. No, no. And I see we our college ministry. We were talking about relationships and it was sex. Mm-hmm. And um, I said that, you know, you hear everybody say, you know, oh, you have to test drive the car before you buy it. 
I'm just glad Jesus didn't feel like he had to test drive me. And it's <laughs> in the room, you just could have heard a pin drop. And I was like, that's not how I meant it. That's not <laughs> the intention. And, uh, it was, it's, it's, it was the whole thing. Uh-huh. So anyway, unrelated, bring it back. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we should close there. <laughs> just close there. Yeah. Close Jesus like right after he says, feel... <laughs> Jesus, thank God he didn't test drive me. Just cut. Hard cut. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, save us. Bring us back. <laughs> no, I, uh, what did you say right before Taylor went down the rabbit hole? Um, I don't you talked, you were talking about the pastors like, the, aren't the ultimate. The, oh yeah. The yeah. Majority, the truth is the word yes and then that had me thinking also and you can push back on this if you want to something you said earlier that i thought was really interesting which was you know talking about like god exists in the text in the word of god in the bible that we have together today this like library of books Mm -hmm. um he exists in creation Mm -hmm. and he exists in our conscience too and i think that sometimes is is it possible that it could be a pitfall of the apologists to say, well, I'm just leaning so heavily on the text to defend and uphold everything and miss the fact that like creation is also the embodiment of mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. And so in with that lens, I could look at it as like, well, oh, is science against the Bible or is science <clears throat> in ways, can I look at it and say, like, that's affirming the beautiful creation of God. Mm-hmm. And it just makes me look, you said earlier, like, what sometimes I get more information, I say, the cell. And I'm like, oh, wow, wow, mm-hmm. God, how could mm-hmm. you do something that crazy? Mm-hmm. Well, in the same sense, it's like, well, how could God also create a universe that we believe is expanding right now? Yeah. And does that just fill me with more wonder and more love yeah. and adoration? And yeah. it actually, if I'm not looking at creation as a thing, as a goal, this can't be, this science can't be true because then that deproves what this physical text says. Mm-hmm. And I can tr- switch my lens to say like, well, creation doing these things, like that just actually expands. Yeah who God is and how great his universe is, how great yeah. the creation is. And it's just a part of a story that I'm continuing to learn yeah. about God because he's bigger than the box that I try to put him in. A hundred percent. I think you should not limit God um, in any sense. And I think you should get to know God in many different ways. At the same time, I would say those ways are, are all going to be harmonious. They're not going to be contradictory. Mm. Right. Yeah. Which is why, like, whenever I'm feeling something that's not, okay, I'm reading my Bible Mm. and I'm like, is this God? I do want to take it back to the Bible. And if it's not contradictory, sure. But look at, look at Jesus in the desert. Mm -hmm. What did the Satan use to tempt God? The word out of context. Out of context. So so it's like this, the physical thing and stuff. And he says like, no. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. You got to study it for what it is. Culture, context. Yeah. It's all, it's all a part of it. It's all a part of it. I think when we try to just limit our information, then we only receive information one way. Yeah. And then I said like, then that's what we become. What people look at and be like the things they don't like about Christians, which would be like ignorant science deniers, bigots. Like if we're just limiting ourselves to one thing, it's like, then it's easy for other people to perceive us that way when really that's not what God looks like. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, that's not what we should look like. Yeah. I mean, Taylor might be a flat earther. I don't know, but, um, you know, <laughs> but I mean, a hundred percent, Corey, it's you, you don't want to be so outside of the realm being able to engage a conversation that you don't have any credibility. So it's like, this will give you credibility to speak to things, but yes, people should get to know God how he speaks to them, how he communicates with them, knowing that the test is written, right? They can take it back to the word of God. Um, I also think there's a, I forget who said this, but apologetics should be used for, there is a difference between knowing and showing. In other words, you can use apologetics to show and to demonstrate, but that's not always going to lead to somebody knowing that God is real. They still need that encounter with God. And that may come through a whole plethora of things. Mm -hmm. But again, it's that tool that can be used to lead to that. But it can always be used to show, here's what we know about God. Mm -hmm. Here's what he's revealed about himself. Here's what he's spoken. But that won't always lead to this knowledge within people. There might need to be some more in addition to that. Yeah, because... Knowledge, the same way that the law could not 
bring us to salvation. Oh, let's go. It couldn't. So, right. So the knowledge isn't going to do it either. Yeah. It is going to be like the truth and the experience of grace and the love of God that's going to yeah. transform your heart yeah. to say that there is, yes, there is more out there. And now I have a name to put it to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. to answer that question that we all kind of have mm-hmm. yeah. born innately in us of, right. of just searching, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. How will they know that you're a follower of Christ? Not because of your ability to defend everything. And those things are all great. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, they're going to know you by your love. Yeah, and this is where it's gone wrong, nine times out of ten. So I'm sitting here saying apologetics matters, but I want to make it very, very overtly clear. I'm really saying it matters when you're doing it in the right way. It should never be from a heart that is anything other than the heart of Jesus. That's talking about illogical. If we want to be logical <laughs> as apologists or whatever, like be logical and carry the heart of Jesus, mm. which is not the heart to hate on others and to look down on others and to be this highly combative go at your throat type of person. The heart of Jesus is I want to walk with you. Yeah. Right. And so if you're going to use apologetics, use it like Jesus would. Yeah. And through this conversation we have said, it's been brought up like, well, if I'm talking to a believer, it's one way. If I talk to a yeah. non-believer, but if I actually looked at it, it's like, how would Jesus look at each of those people? Like does Jesus, the first thing he looks at them and sees like, you're a believer, you're not a believer. Or is it, does he just look at it and say like, no, my son, your son's a God. You're made in his image. So even if we've changed like our view of that, like will we approach the conversations even differently? Or do we think he looks at people in black and white first? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I get, I get what you you're saying. You know what I'm saying? saying? It's like I, we've used that verbiage. It just yeah, it shows yeah. why is apologists, yeah. <laughs> like we, we stick a label on it. It's like, no, well, absolutely. so we say apologetics apologetics is this thing that's the label and then even when we talk about how we use apologetics we say it's right. the other and us and we should use it differently for each of them and that does nothing but create more well right. and i don't mean it in that sense no i know i'm, I'm yeah i'm more talking i would even expand it beyond that i would just talk about it from social intelligence in general like to me that's so important and smart, <laughs> smart people yeah, and dumb people. Just be, <laughs> don't be dumb no, that's like, what brandon I'm, pastor brandon <laughs> don't be dumb don't be dumb Believer or not, if I'm talking to somebody who is like my best friend, yeah. I'm going to feel a lot easier being like, oh my gosh, you're an idiot. Right. And I'm not going to like, I'm going to just be yeah. like that with them and we're going to yeah. just go at it. But yeah. but I'm not going to do that. To, yeah. Right. So that's more yeah. what I'm talking about. Just For that sure. awareness of what relational capacity do I have with this person? How can I speak to them in a way that's going to be real? Well, I think mm-hmm. it's, I think we start getting into stuff like this and like, uh, I'm thinking about what you're saying of like believers versus unbelievers and is there a separation there and all this kind of stuff. Like I think it's really interesting because this gets to like um, what, what you were saying, but like to give an example of it, like Paul or Peter, when they were, when they in acts, when they're talking, they talk differently to the Jewish people than they do the Gentiles, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's because the Jewish people had all the texts, knew the story, had the yeah. Torah, right? Yeah. And it had been, they'd memorized it. It had been told to them over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Gentiles didn't have that. Right. Yeah. And so I think that that comes into play when we're looking at mm-hmm. it, but yes. Yeah. The point was still Jesus. And I think it's so yeah. interesting that, you know, we start the conversation, I don't know, like an hour and a half ago. Like it's been a while. <laughs> and Jimmer Matt's like, come on guys. As we start to get into it, like one of the first things that I feel like we talked about, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was right in the middle, but it felt like <laughs> one of the very first things was like, okay, like Brandon, can you tell us about like a young earth versus an old earth? Like how old is the earth? Yeah. And I feel like that's where we want to go. And that's what we want to talk about, to be honest with you. And that's what the internet does. It, mm-hmm. it, listen, the reason people make YouTube videos mm-hmm. about it is because it gets clicks. Yeah. Just being honest, like that's why they do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that we could have a whole nother discussion on all of those other things and it would be a lot of fun. I would enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Corey and I do it quite frequently. Yeah. Have talks about different stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But I think the fact that now for in my head, at least for the past hour, we've been going over different ways of rationalizing and saying and explaining none of it matters pointing back to Jesus is all the things that we've been saying. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what matters. Right. So if you're not wielding the tool in that way, then why do it at all? Ooh. 
You're yeah. just coming. I feel like every every other line you say is gonna be like your the next title for your sermon. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny can the i next talk about relationships and sex you're not wielding the right way relationships and sex jesus didn't test drive me <laughs> <laughs> so don't <laughs> so bad oh my gosh oh my gosh i would also add this to the conversation sorry no, we're cutting it oh are we done brandon Oh, was that the end? No, I'm messing with Oh, you. I don't get sarcasm all the time. Okay. Um, so I would add this. Like, I would not advocate this is the best way to evangelize to people. Go mm. prove to them that the ark was real and it was made out of this wood and floated and all mm. this stuff. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I think we could do a whole other thing on evangelism. But, like, mm. evangelism... Do it the way that we see modeled out time and time again, Paul in the New Testament. Condemn Here's what people you need with to poster know. boards. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Right. It's like read through Romans. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that right there is how are you gonna win the world to Christ? Not clickbaity thumbnails and all mm -hmm. these things. Again. It can serve its purpose. Right. But what I'm not advocating is this is how we witness and evangelize. I think it's how you can strengthen mm -hmm. your faith. And I think it's how you can engage culture and dialogue. But how do you win people to faith? You do it through presenting the gospel in the way the gospel was meant to be presented. Mm. Yeah. Right? Romans 1 through whatever. Here's our fallenness. Here's our brokenness. Here's why we need the grace. It's this build up to the grace and how fallen we are. And then bam, Paul hits you with the good news of the grace of Jesus. And you can't help but say, I really like that Jesus. I really like that he came and took my place and bore my sin and did all this stuff. Like that's how we mm. evangelize. That's how we share. So none of this is necessarily meant to be. Yeah. Here's how you win people to faith. You definitely do dig deeper. And I think that as we go, as Kingdom and Power continues to evolve, evolve, I think that like one of the big things that we want to do um, is that we don't just want to have um, maybe people who all um, would say the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Or like when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, different sides of the same story, that they're all going to get there to the exact the exact same way. Yeah. Right. We want to have people on who believe in Jesus. Mm hmm. Right. Um, and honestly, we'd probably at some point like to have people on who don't believe in Jesus mm -hmm. just to talk mm -hmm. to them. Right. Yeah. Um, and understand and kind of just ask them questions. But I don't think that we we don't have any other agenda. Mm -hmm. Then let's point at Jesus. But let's also like look at everything else around it so yeah. that you can build your faith so that you yeah. can build your beliefs so that you can build what you want to base your foundation and your rationale yeah. and your logic on as you go through and do that. Right. Yeah. Um, but I have really enjoyed this brand. It's been a blast. Thank you guys. I feel good. This was so fun. We'll do it again. And I love both of you. <laughs> Dang it. We barely know each other, Brandon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Back off. I'm going to have to test drive it a little bit. Oh! <laughs> right. um, Drummer Matt, do you have anything to add? I do. I have one question for Brandon. You mentioned uh, watching YouTube videos, reading books. Do you have any for anybody that wants to start getting into apologetics, where's, where are good starting points? Well, here's my problem. <laughs> I don't agree with anybody fully, <laughs> but here's, here's like a couple of names that I would recommend. Douglas Grudhouse. Boo. <laughs> has Taylor's, written a, you, a couple. He's my big thick apologetics book okay. guy. With yeah. Douglas what? Grudhouse, I think. G-R-O-T-H-U-I-S. However you would pronounce that is how... Um, <laughs> is what I would say. You just, his mic he, just he just like threw Dumped. his mic. Yes. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> again, <laughs> this is all disclaimered with really good things mixed with some things. I don't think anyone fully would agree with, but that's anyone. William, uh, William Lane Craig. Yep. You're probably familiar with him. Um, his dude you mentioned earlier, Josh McDowell. Yep. Yep. Read some of his Lee Strobel stuff. I don't know if you're a fan or not, but, um, I've read some of his, uh, not a ton. Um, 
I'm trying to think the YouTube that's, a, that's probably a good starting that's point. That's a good list. Yeah. yeah. Any other brain busters, Matt? That's what you have? That's all I got. <laughs> Love cool. Matt. Cool. Man, well, thank you for yeah, coming on, being our first guest. I'm sure we'll have more conversations. I look forward yeah. to that. Yeah. And uh, next yeah. time you come on, be ready to argue. <laughs> okay. Not as the one that says it doesn't matter. We just have to look at Jesus. You have to pick a side. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's not it's true. Fun. Yeah, man. Love you, man. Love you, man.